Okay, welcome back to part three of iPad 101, an introduction to the effective use of the iPad in your classroom. Again, you can view this presentation on Prezi in its entirety um, at the address listed there. Remember, the V, the U, and the N are all capital letters. So in part one, we went through and looked at the different gestures we could do. There was pinch and zoom, or pinch and spread to zoom, Four fingers swipe side to side and the four fingers swipe up. There was our five finger group that closed out the app we were in. A screenshot. And then in part two, we started to talk about apps by just looking at the settings. The settings are where we stayed for all of part two and there were lots of good tips in there. So if you haven't watched part two, I would suggest you do that. And if you didn't know those gestures, go back and watch part one if you started here on part three. So now for part three, what we're gonna do is we're gonna look at a few apps that work well for you in your classroom. You could use these apps tomorrow and seem like an ed tech genius in your classroom to your administrators and your parents. So the first one, this is the big one for me, show me. Now, iPad 201 is another series of videos that I have going on right now. We dig in depth into show me. But what I wanna do right now is simply show you a video of what show me can do and then I'll do a quick demonstration so you can see how show me would work in your classroom so let's watch this video real quick okay guys let's open up our show me app you know show me started with a very simple concept and that was to capture whatever you want to teach using show me a teacher can create a lesson on any topic okay let's get started by first setting up the coordinate system and their students can watch the lesson whenever wherever to first draw the graph for y equals x squared, like so, and then move the entire graph up by three units. And teachers have been using Show Me in all kinds of innovative ways. My name is Dr. George Maurer. I'm the assistant principal of Mineola Middle School. Show Me has been an incredible application for us. The app is so intuitive. The students themselves picked it up and they were off and running before we even came in. And the application has been wonderful and allows students to create. It allows them to collaborate, to be able to help someone learn something that they didn't know before because of what you've done. How could you not feel good about that? That's good. Hi, my name is Dana Hagen. I'm a speech language pathologist. I work with children of a variety of disabilities. And what I like about this app is that I can use it with all of them. I like that title. That's a really good title. Just last week, one of my students, he just started becoming a little bit more comfortable being verbal. And what I did with him was that I asked him what he ate for breakfast. And he shared a whole little story with me with the Show Me app. And then I shared it with his mom, and she started to cry because she said she really has never heard her son speak so eloquently. But another interesting thing started happening. Teachers started to share their lessons publicly. And this meant that any student, regardless of where they lived or what school they went to, can now get access to all these great lessons created by amazing teachers across the world. What we've realized is that great teachers are all around us. They can be artists, writers, musicians. And with Show Me, they're changing the way we learn and making quality education accessible to anyone in the world. Okay, so there's a preview of Show Me. Let's look now at the app itself. So when you open Show Me, this is the screen you'll come to. You see it's, it's already logged into me in my class. Um, now, I just named it Mr. Lachlan's class, but these are just all kind of random videos. Some of them are mine, some of them are students. Uh, some of them are my own children's videos that we've used for other things. So what you wanna do is you wanna click on that green circle with the plus arrow in there. This says Create New Show Me. Okay, so now here we are in the show me, and you can look at the tools across the top. You can see um, we are going to look at these colors here. There's, there's preset colors that they give you. If you want to add extra colors, you can click this plus sign, um, and it'll look like there are other colors there. But these actually, if you click on them, they are going to want to charge you 
um, to add these different colors in. I have no use for it, so I've never added them, but it is a feature you could do if you wanted to. Um, so right now we're on black, as you can see right there. Um, and so if I draw on the screen, everything I draw with my finger or with my stylus will show up on the screen. Um, and so this frees you as a teacher to be able to, instead of writing on your whiteboard or writing on your chalkboard, to be able to walk around the room and write on your screen, projecting this over um, your projector onto your, your screen that you have in your classroom. Um, and so up here, there is, this is an eraser, so we can just erase, right? This is another eraser that lets me erase the whole thing, and I'll erase the whole thing. Uh, this here is simply insert a picture, so we'll go to choose photo, camera roll, and I'll add a picture. Now notice I can shrink the picture, I can make it bigger, smaller, I can rotate that picture as much as I want just by clicking on the 90 degree rotation. Um, I can move it to the front or the back if I have other pictures in, or I can delete it. Once I'm good, I click this done button right here at the bottom. And now it tells me that if I tap and hold over the picture, I can bring that menu back up. See, there it is, but I don't need it. And notice all my other menu options come back. So now I can, right over the top of this, I can annotate um, and try to kind of point out different features to different people. So the, the best part about this now is this little button right here. This is the magic. This is a record button. So now I can record a screencast um, from my iPad uh, while teaching in the classroom. So let me uh, do this. Notice there's a clear drawings only and clear all. I want to keep the picture but get rid of the drawings. I can just click clear drawings only. So now here I am looking at my picture and I'm ready to record a screencast. So I'm going to push the record button right there. Notice down here the timer starts. As that timer is running, you are recording. Um, and so now I can record and I can refer to different things on my screen and I can say, look, uh, on this screenshot, I want you to notice um, these new airdrop features. This is really cool where you can send things wirelessly to other people. Um, this right here, this is the airplane mode. This is what you're required to use when you're on an airplane um, here in the States. Um, this one in particular is for Wi-Fi. This is for Bluetooth. So say I'm, that's my recording I'm done. I'm going to click the same button up here. Notice that my timer starts to blink now because it's paused. And this changes to save show me. So I'm going to want to have, I'm going to click Save Show Me, and it's going to play it back for me. I'm just going to click Save. I don't need to listen to myself talk. And then we're going to enter in some details for it, and we'll pretend this is, we'll just call it Example. Click Next. Um, let's pretend this was for an art video. Well, let's call it Drawing, and we don't have to add any more topics. We can click right down here, Done Adding Topics. Now the video will post, and as it's posting, it'll show you. Um, once it's posted, now this is where the magic is. Click on it. The video will start to play. The video will start to play, but you don't need to listen to it again. This little rectangle with arrow jumping out of it. This is the magic of the iPads, right? It's always the magic. Now I can share this video on Twitter, Facebook, or uh, open it in Safari, or email this show me. What I like to do is email these show me's because I can... Uh, when you click on email to show me, it's going to produce in your email a link. This link right here. This is the key. Now I can use this link and it links to this video hosted by show me. It doesn't take up any space on my computer. It doesn't take any space on your district's network or anything. Show me host this video and with that link I can send my video out. Maybe I taught a lesson on it. I can send it to students. I can send it to parents. I can send it to other teachers. They can listen in and see how I taught and they can review themselves. If you're thinking about a flipped classroom, this is a great tool for doing this. Now given Show Me is very, very basic, but this is a great tool that you could start with tomorrow. And so now I can even take that link and put it in a QR code for all you QR code fans out there. There's your link. That's the key to a QR code, right? You need a link. Well, there it is. And if I, if I can have a kid scan, some, scan a QR code, and my video will pop right up there. So this is the power of Show Me, and this is why I use Show Me so much in my classroom as a teacher. So, now, you may have never heard of Show Me, or maybe you have, but most people have heard of Edge Creations, and the Edge Creations, it's the same thing. Um, these essentially work the exact same way. They used to be different, um, but now they work pretty much the same way, so if you prefer Edge Creations, use that app, and you can do the same things as we just showed on Show Me. So, next app I wanna show you that'll be helpful in your classroom for organization is Dropbox. Dropbox, if you've never used it, you have just hit a gold mine. Dropbox is my favorite app that I use every day on my iPad. 
Um, and what Dropbox allows you to do is to sync up all your devices with a file system that keeps them all the same. Let me show you a little promo video from Dropbox and I think you'll understand. You've been there. You're about to buy lunch and realize your wallet is in your other pants. Or maybe you left your keys at home. The problem is organization. You need one place for everything, like a magic pocket. Putting something in the magic pocket means it's always there, no matter what you wear or where you are. The same thing is true for computers. If you have more than one, keeping track of all of your files can be a pain. Solving this problem is one of the big ideas behind Dropbox. It's like a magic pocket, a single, secure place for all of your stuff. Let's meet Josh, who is preparing for a big trip to Africa. Right now, all of his trip info is spread across his laptop, desktop, and phone. He needs to consolidate it all and is tired of having to email files to himself or move them around with a USB drive. Then he found Dropbox, which creates a new kind of folder on his computers. These folders work hard to be exactly alike, even across Macs and PCs. By adding his itinerary to his laptop Dropbox, he can be sure the same file will show up in his desktop Dropbox and even on his phone. The same thing happens when he saves a document in a Dropbox folder. The document gets updated across all of his Dropboxes. But it's not just his computers. The Dropbox website also works to be exactly like his other Dropboxes. Anything he puts in Dropbox is available on the website automatically. This way, if his Jeep takes a dive and his computer is ruined, he can still get to his files on the Dropbox website, where they're always backed up. As it turns out, Josh's Safari was a success, and his laptop made it home with lots of videos and photos to share. Instead of emailing everything, he just shared a Dropbox folder with his mom, so she could get copies of photos she wants to frame. Because it worked so well for travel, Josh made Dropbox the home for all of his stuff, so it's accessible anytime, wherever he goes. Whether you're traveling the world, running a business, or simply organizing your life, Dropbox means you can stop worrying about managing files and backups and get on with your next adventure. You can download Dropbox now at dropbox.com. Okay, so Dropbox, very, very simple product, great solution. You can sync up all your files. So if I drop, if I make something on my house computer, I can sync it to Dropbox, throw it into Dropbox. It'll sync on my school computer, my iPhone, my iPad, my laptop, whatever you have. It will sync across all devices and all networks automatically. It's beautiful. You'll never need a flash drive again. And you can even create shared folders in Dropbox and share them between you and maybe your, your, your grade level team. Um, and you can all share files and drop them in. Everybody's computer will get updated with the file that you just shared. No need to even email large files. It gets around all of those problems we tend to have. Another useful app, Class Dojo. Okay, Class Dojo, big deal here. This is behavior management software. This is something you want to use in your classroom um, to, to really track kids' behavior and to communicate with parents as well. Um, so if you go to Class Dojo, you can go to classdojo.com and look at it. I'm going to show you from the app's point of view what we're going to do here. So let me pull open Class Dojo. Here is Class Dojo. You're going to notice that I have a lot of classes in my dojo. Um, I use this extensively when I was in the computer lab. Um, this is something I use for every single one. But I'm going to go into my sample class down here. That's that class right here, my sample class. You might notice some of these people are, are pretty famous. Um, so there's some options here. Um, notice I have 10 students. I have nine trackable behaviors in that classroom. Um, so from here, I can start the class and start keep tracking points. Um, there is a messaging feature, so if you're familiar with Remind 101, um, that turned into Remind, then this is kind of the same thing. There's reports, I can add a take attendance, all that through here. But we're just going to start class. Okay, so here's my rather famous class. This is actually part of the cast and crew of um, Ocean's Eleven. Um, I just love that movie, so I chose all the characters from it. So in here, you'll notice that some of these characters have these green bubbles with points. That means that this character, this person has done something in the classroom worth earning a point. So I'm gonna click on Al Pacino. And you see down here, all these that pop up. And so do I have these positive behaviors and three negative behaviors. So if Al Pacino gave me a good answer, uh, something I really liked, then I could give him this one right here that says, awesome job. And notice now Al has a point. Um, maybe George Clooney and Matt Damon 
were uh, working together on a project and they were helping each other, well, I can give to this one, helping others. Um, but perhaps maybe uh, Carl Reiner and Elliot Gould um, were just off task. They were horse playing, running around. Well, I can give them a negative point for horse playing. Notice Elliot's points went to zero because he only had one, and Carl, who was at two, is now down to one point. So it keeps a running record of all, all of the points, um, and we'll come back and show you that in the, the, the back end in a moment. Okay, but let's say we call on Elliot later, and Elliot now, he gets uh, he was on task, and he gave, completed his work. Okay, so I've given Elliot two points back. Now here's where the, the, the gold works out for me, um, is now I can go through here, and um, I can show the report for Elliot. So when I go down here, and now I'm gonna go check reports. I'm gonna find Elliot Gould, there he is right there. Notice he's got a 67%, let's click on it, let's see. Oh, Elliot got two positives and one needs work for this week. Um, so we can see if I click on it, over here, that, that green was for being on task. This green was for complete assignment. What did he get a negative for? Horse playing. Oh, that's not good for Elliot. But you can see you can run these reports. Now, these reports uh, are more in detail on, on the web version of this. Um, and the web version is where you can get a lot of things done really quick. Um, but what's cool about this is when, when students sign up, students are assigned these characters. And I don't know if we talked about these characters. But when you look at the, the class, each person gets a monster or a character. Now, students get their own code. They can go through and they can edit these guys out. Um, and, and change all of their behaviors and how they look and all this kind of thing. Um, and then parents also get a code and parents can see the behavior scores of their children. So every Friday, your students' behavior reports will be automatically emailed to parents and they're gonna get a checkup from you every Friday. Now, nothing else besides keeping track of these points is required on your part. You can do this on your iPhone, you can do it on Android, you can do it on your iPad, or, or from your computer. Anytime you're adding points um, and subtracting points, it'll record them all into the same thing and the parents get that report. And parents think you're a genius because they're getting these reports from you weekly and you're not doing anything besides what you would normally do in the classroom anyway. One way that I modify this is the, the point totals. I actually have, like when a student reaches 20 points, I give, an, I give a reward. 40 points is another reward. So as the points add up through the year, you can add rewards and give students a goal to reach towards. I think this is an excellent tool um, for doing just that. So the last tool I want to show you um, is the simplest one, but I think it's the one that's the most overlooked. Your camera. Your camera is a gold mine for helping you in your classroom. Uh, how many times have you done a science project um, that you intended to be whole class and maybe the whole thing broke down, you didn't have enough supplies and it turned into a teacher demonstration. Uh, it's not the most optimal, but it is something that happens. Well, here you go. Now you can get the class involved and they don't have to all crowd around that one table where nobody can see and the kid in the back, I can't see. You don't have to do any of that. Just turn on your camera, assign a camera person, have them hold your iPad and suddenly you are filming your science project live. So when you turn on that camera, it'll look something like this. All right, so we're gonna go out and we are going to look for our camera. There it is. And so now you are going to look at the wormhole because I'm recording what I'm recording. But as we go here, you can see there's some of my office, there's my Red Sox gear, that my wife is a huge Red Sox fan. We'll slide over here. And we'll look, there's some of my Astros gear, and there's some uh, books in there, great book right there. Love Does, Bob Goff, great read. Um, and so you can kind of spin around and see more things in my office. And so the point of this, and just kind of demonstrating this, is that you can actually see uh, your students using this camera uh, and getting more involved, and they can everyone can see the same thing. You can even get close-ups and zooms in. Now, I recommend not just using the regular camera, but this one called board cam. And the only difference with your regular camera and board cam um, is now I can draw on the screen. So if I want to draw where that gnome is, I can go down here where the pencil is. And, oops, I missed it. If I choose pencil, I can now circle, see the gnome, 
there's the gnome and what I want to do. Oh, and look at this book about ballparks, right? I can write on it and kind of help narrate as we go. Or you can even have uh, students do that, which is always an awesome idea to have students um, involved in the learning process and helping you as the teacher. So <clears throat> those were the apps we really wanted to show you in this part three. There are so many apps. There are millions of apps and there are so many educational apps that we, we can't possibly take the time to show you everything, but these are the ones that we thought were the best, and we, and we really hope you come to use those. So, uh, my name is Jamie. I'm so glad you joined us for this series of lessons called iPad 101. Um, look for iPad 201 as well on the same webpage. If you came from my web, website, jamielachlan.com, then you will see that. Um, I'm on Twitter at Jamie Lachlan as well. Send me a note. Let me know you watched this. Let me know it was helpful. And uh, maybe you've got another idea of something that you would like to see. I can help you create that um, and do that with you as well. Thanks for watching. See you next time.